Let's go to our panel now. Professor Jane Kelsey from the University of Auckland Law School and a long-time critic of free trade agreements. Helen Kelly, President of the Council of Trade Unions. Stephen Jacoby, Executive Director of the NZUS Council and in the capital, Wellington City Councillor Joe Coglin. Welcome to you all. Joe, if I could start with you, if I may. Uh, taxpayers have subsidised Hollywood movies now to the tune uh, of around $500 million. What are the benefits of that to Wellington? OK, well, look, I just want to put it in context to start with. Um, in Wellington so far, we've had three Lord of the Rings movies. We've had King Kong, Avatar, Tintin and currently The Hobbit. Uh, Weta Digital are currently working on five films. Um, James Cameron's moving here, you know, the biggest grossing movies of all time, uh, Titanic and Avatar, so the director of those is going to be living here. Um, you know, this is very, very big business and it absolutely is putting Wellington and New Zealand on the world stage. And just um, in terms of dollars, feature films in Wellington generated $570 million uh, last year, and that's doubled since 2008. And actually, that's pre the Hobbit figures. Sure. And also, what it means for Wellington in terms of jobs is 4,000 full-time equivalent jobs. And you know, if you take the multiplier effects of those around the nation, you're talking about around 20,000 jobs created in New Zealand on the back of this industry. And also, 800 businesses in Wellington are connected directly with the film industry. I so a a aside okay. from that, there's a whole lot of other sure. benefits as well, but in terms of innovative industries that spin off the back of the film Let's industry. Let's just so look at The Hobbit then, Joe. Are we subsidising, you know, The Hobbit $60 million, or are we subsidising Weta and Peter Jackson here? Look, I think the point is that what we're doing is we're creating, you know, enormous numbers of jobs in New Zealand that wouldn't otherwise be here. Are they foreign? Are they and, domestic and, jobs, though? Are we bringing people in with expertise into oh, this country? Oh, they're absolutely domestic jobs. I mean, we've got 4,000 full-time equivalents in Wellington who are employed on the back of this industry. And as I've already said, around New Zealand, you're talking about 20,000 jobs. I mean, it's electricians, it's labourers, it's caterers, it's okay. designers, it's, it's seamstresses. It's across such a wide sure. variety of sectors across the economy. Okay. 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 Let me bring Helen Kelly in here from um, uh, the Council of Trade Unions. Helly, Hel Helen, uh, the government now is cons considering increasing its subsidy. John Key says it is a $3 billion industry. At the moment, we're subsidising to the tune of 15%. That could almost double. It is a $3 billion industry, though, he says. Yeah, and we don't object at all to the Prime Minister going to Hollywood and talking about bringing films here, and the, the industry that it's creating is obviously very exciting. There's nothing that we object to in that model. What we object to is some of the uh, things that have run alongside that, like, for example, very, very free uh, immigration laws, which they've now changed. We've just seen where to uh, apply to bring 400 foreign workers in to do some core jobs in the industry that they should be training and giving to New Zealanders. We've seen the employment law change, basically removing all employment rights for uh, workers in the film industry. And we're seeing the secrecy. I mean, your introduction piece there that you showed at the beginning of the show, all the secrecy around the TPP agreement, around the discussions, around what's going on with DotCom. I mean, it's all right for Key to say there's a lot of conspiracy theories. If he made this transparent, opened up, what um, those American companies are seeking from us in exchange for this, then we could make a judgment, an open and fair judgment. Mm. And the other thing is that we are seeing jobs in this country going out the window all over the place. And why is the government also not putting the time and energy into looking into those industries? Manufacturing, over 100,000 jobs in manufacturing. Why isn't the government looking at those as well? Why aren't they, for example, spending six million allowing Kiwi Rail to make our trains here? Long-term engineering, building, fabrication Some would argue, jobs. though, if you're going to subsidise those industries, then why not the screen industry as well? Oh, when we're not arguing about subsidising the screen industry, what we're saying is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Mm. These are long-term permanent jobs with employment rights in New Zealand. The government seems to favour Hollywood, and what mm. we're worried about is the trade-offs that we see okay. going on and really affecting our economy. Joe Coglin, Helen Kelly says 400 migrant jobs coming in here. That's not domestic jobs, is it? That's people coming in to take those jobs. No, but I'm glad you've mentioned that because actually what that means is it's people coming in to upskill Kiwis in, a, across this or industry. Is which people is just coming in and then bouncing back no. out and going back to Hollywood and Bollywood and places like that? No, they come in and earn some I cash mean, and then leave again? No, not at all. I mean, diversification is really, really important for the Wellington economy. And, and this industry has enabled our economy to diversify, not just in the film industry, but across digital innovative creation. But if these people had been no, coming in me, and upskilling people, an well, no, if they had been coming in upskilling people, then they wouldn't need, after all these movies we've already had, to be bringing more people in again to upskill people. Well, We'd Rachel, have those just people let me talk to you about growing the pie. And I'll just give you the example of a company called Matakina who um, you know, have used international visual imaging technicians to work with them in their biomedical business, which is based here in Wellington, 
And now what they're actually doing is they're taking breast screening technology to the world and they're deploying that in Europe and America. No now that is a spin-off of these innovative, creative people who come into our city. What's happening is they're upskilling the people in our economy so that we're actually growing the whole pie. And in fact, we're, we're basically creating a whole new industry of innovation okay. and creative jobs. It's incredible. Helen Kelly. There was no market test on those 400 jobs. The government changed the immigration law to favour these industries to bring migrants. And if you want to bring in a plasterer or an electrician, you've got to show there's no New Zealander able to do the job. Why has the film industry been exempt from that and been accredited, able to bring in these roles without any market test to see whether there are Kiwis that can do these jobs, whether this is truly upskilling or simply replacing New Zealand workers? OK, let me bring in Professor Jane Kelsey here. Jane, John Key had uh, dinner in Hollywood with Chris Dodd. He's uh, from the Motion Picture Association of America. What do you make of that dinner? Do you see any danger, if you like, in that dinner? Well, there's been a lot of attention paid to the dot-com link, but the real subtext of the visit to Hollywood is what's happening with the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. The movie industry and the music industry are the two biggest copyright lobbies in the US. They've been trying to develop global rules that bind countries to intellectual property, in particular regimes that suit their interests. There was a, a failed attempt to do that with something known as the ACTA Agreement, and even that compromise is now being knocked out because of big protests in Europe. So they see the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement as basically the vanguard through which they can drive these new rules. We know that the Prime Minister's a dealmaker, uh, and there are real risks that already secretive negotiations are going to be compounded by secret deals that he does in Hollywood. At the same time as the lead US negotiators were in Wellington this week pushing the same rules in secret in discussions in Wellington. And I suppose the sad irony for some of us is that this is one area of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement where our negotiators have been standing firm for two and a half years saying no to what Hollywood is demanding. And they now risk having that ground undercut from them by what John Key is doing in Hollywood. Let me bring you in now, um, Stephen Jacoby, because this is what sort of makes Kiwis' hackles rise about the TPP, isn't it? That, that we are, in essence, opening the door to the Americans, and before we know it, we'll see more Kim.com sagas and elements like that unfolding here. America will have too much influence over what's going on in this country. Well, in a poll of New Zealanders' views that we released on Friday, over 60% of New Zealanders said they wanted New Zealand to connect more with the rest of the world, and TPP is just one of the ways of doing that. It is complex. It is a broad undertaking. Uh, it's still a work in progress. We don't know what the outcome will be, and I think our negotiators are very conscious of both the benefits and the risks uh, that apply to this negotiation. It's said that it's held in secret. It's not a very well-kept secret, if that's the case. Uh, and uh, stakeholders like Jane Kelsey will have every opportunity to participate in the ne negotiating round when it takes place in Auckland. I would oh, argue Stephen, that's not Sorry, true. You know that those negotiations are closed door negotiations. And the reason that we know about the intellectual property chapter is because of successive leaks. And the government has not opened the door to providing information to us. Indeed, we won't get to see what deals they have made until the agreement is concluded. That is not the well, way well, you Jane make is decisions. Right. Jane is democracy. right that the negotiation is conducted um, uh, in a confidential setting, and there are very good reasons for that, because uh, there are very sensitive economic and commercial matters involved. It's no different in this trade negotiation as in any other negotiation, as any other international negotiation. Sure, but, but Stephen, what I think there the are point, also uh, issues here. needs to here. be made is that um, stakeholders uh, have been given a much greater access to these negotiations sure, but than there are any also other time in the past. Of sovereignty Every time here, I go though, into so foreign affairs, I see Jane Kelsey leaving. So, uh, you know, um, I think more could be done, admittedly, um, to tell people about um, the scope of these negotiations. I understand that. Uh, but for the time being, um, this is a work in progress, and we'll have the opportunity to see the result when the treaty comes before Parliament and will be considered. How could we ensure then, Stephen, that the TPP doesn't impact in any way on our sovereignty? Or is it a given that if the TPP goes ahead, we will risk losing at least some of that? Uh, well, I can't understand why any New Zealand government would want to trade away New Zealand's sovereignty across the board. But the way to make sure that the negotiators are focusing on what's important is for stakeholders like Jane Kelsey and business interests and the CTU and others um, to maintain a very active dialogue with them, which is in fact uh, what happens. Uh, and as I said, Jane sits down with the negotiators on a very regular basis, uh, as we do, as Helen Kelly does. 
Uh, and the government is very well aware of the risks that arise. Helen Kelly, uh, where do you... Parts of the negotiation are completely transparent in that regard. Helen Kelly, are they transparent? No, they're not transparent. And what's at stake here, it is very complicated, but what's at stake here, for example, is um, they, there may be very much restricted use of the internet as these Hollywood uh, producers try to protect their intellectual property, which is one interest, but as New Zealanders, perhaps in smaller film industry and, and creative industries, want to use the internet to promote New Zealand culture and New Zealand industry. There may be, for example, restrictions on employment law, because we can see that now foreign uh, investors criticising Egypt, for example, for introducing minimum wages, saying, well, we're building stuff in Egypt, we didn't have a minimum wage, we've got a trade agreement, this could be a breach of the minimum wage law. We've already seen that the, their interests of some of, of large corporates are not the same as New Zealand citizens and they have to be balanced and honestly if there was transparency, openness, real debate then uh, people would be able to relax and see the issues as they are but there's huge secrecy. Jane Kelsey, would you be happy with the TPP in some format if sovereignty was protected in some way? Is there a form of the TPP that you would be happy with if you like? Well, it's actually a contradiction in terms because what the agreement would do is bind the hands of New Zealand governments into the future and give foreign investors a right to sue and enforce many of those rules. And, and I think ordinary New Zealanders need to understand what we do know from the leaks, which is that the Hollywood industry is asking, one, for an end to parallel imports, two, for an extension of the copyright powers, which would make um, libraries, etc., um, it, it would really do their, their budgets. But, but in saying that, shouldn't an American firm be able to come in here and protect their copyright? What's wrong with doing that? Well, well there is a balance, and copyright law, intellectual property law, has sought a very delicate balance over many years. What we're seeing now are sets of rules that Hollywood wants that would make it virtually impossible to engage in many of the innovative industries and practices on the internet. And it would turn ISPs... Just because the Americans want something doesn't ISPs mean to say it will be in fact agreed. ...effective police of the internet on behalf of Hollywood. Now, that's introducing the kind of secrecy and invasion of privacy issues that we're seeing coming to the fore with the dot-com saga. It's a quite scary scenario. It needs to be in the public domain. And Stephen's quite disingenuous in saying that there is transparency. Any briefings we get are so obscure that they tell us nothing. Stephen Jacoby, I will let you respond to that. Uh, well, just because the Americans are advancing certain matters in the context of the negotiation doesn't mean that they will necessarily be accepted. And the same is true for New Zealand. We have some interesting uh, um, things we would like to achieve in this negotiation as well. That's the nature of a negotiation. And there has to be some consensus around those areas. Jane Kelsey mentioned ACTA a moment ago. Uh, the United States tried similar uh, tactics in ACTA and was unsuccessful. And I'm quite sure that New Zealand um, will be able to um, okay. maintain things that it agrees or believes Let me just... uh, need to be maintained uh, in the course of this negotiation. Let me just bring in Joe Coglin here. Joe. Uh... Are you prepared to, for the, for the sake of jobs, pay this price? Essentially, we're giving up some of our personal liberty here, potentially, for a few hundred jobs. Is that worth it? Well, I'm not sure if we are. I mean, I don't know enough about it. I'm not a trade negotiator and I'm certainly not an IP lawyer, but I'm pretty sure New Zealand's good at negotiations because we've done a lot of them in the past and I'm sure that hopefully a fair and level playing field will be the, be the outcome. But what I do know is that this industry is very, very important to New Zealand. It generates an enormous number of jobs and it also okay. provides an amazing platform for us to develop IP and develop our reputation as an innovative, you know, creative country that does a lot more than just produce milk powder and um, have nice sure. scenery. Sure, and you know, there are benefits too for Hollywood and, and it has this subsidy at the moment with 15% that could become 30%, which would be extraordinary. Why then is Wellington having to pay to host the premiere of The Hobbit? Well, the Hobbit, the Hobbit is going to be the Hobbit premiere is a world premiere, and it's going to, you know, be shown all over the world and and generate enormous amounts of tourism benefit and, Possibly. and promotion. Possibly. For, well, of course. Well, it will, you know, we Rachel. see the red I mean, carpet, obviously. don't we? We see the stars on the red carpet. There's a bit of glitz, a bit of glam, but you know, is it really making people think? Right, I'm off to the capital because that red carpet looked pretty good. Well, you know, it's all about telling the story, isn't it? And if we don't promote ourselves to the rest of the world, then they won't know about us. So this is another very good way of doing it, in a way that puts New Zealand in a light, which is incredibly, incredibly positive. What's it going to cost the council, though? Over a million dollars to host this premiere? Oh, around an, I couldn't. I actually haven't got the exact number on me, but um, I can tell you that the investment will be, you know, the return on investment will be absolutely enormous. Jane Kelsey. 
is it worth hosting something like this, do you think? A million dollars we're subsidising already. You know, you'd be considered probably a bit of a killjoy if you're, you're, you're saying, no, we shouldn't host the Premier. Well, I'd like to see us, as Helen has said, uh, support our local industries to the extent that we support our international ones. And one of the things that the Hollywood industry has been targeting in the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a provision that would allow some kind of special recognition of the needs of the local cultural industry. And in fact, that was introduced when Helen Clark wanted to introduce local content quotas like Australia has to support the local culture industry and was told that a previous national government had already signed away the right to do that in the World Trade Organization. So these agreements have a long history of closing the doors for our local innovation, our local industry and our local jobs to get the advantages that John Key is now promising to Hollywood. All right, we do have to leave it there. Uh, Professor Jane Kelsey from the University of Auckland, thank you. Helen Kelly, President of the CTU. Uh, Stephen Jacoby, Executive Director of the NZUS Council, thank you too. And Joe Coughlin from the Wellington City Council for us, thank you.